Hi guys, it's Mike. How are you doing today? I have some interesting news for you. I'm speaking to you today on some uh, new audio equipment that was given to me. I have to say that uh, my mind is completely, totally blown. It still is. This, uh, this equipment arrived a couple of days ago. Uh, the person who gave it to me rang me up and said it was on its way. And I was like, what are you talking about? And they said, don't worry about it. I was talking to God about this. Here, just take the stuff. Don't worry about it. Okay, mind continuing to be blown, okay? So I have this microphone. It's got an isolation clamp on a mic stand, and I've got this uh, preamp uh, connected to my computer, my laptop via USB. Uh, I went online and looked at some reviews of the thing, and I hope hopes that uh, what I was trying to do is, am I using this thing right? Well, yeah, I, I am. And... Uh, I've made some sample recordings and I've been blabbering all afternoon trying to come up with an episode, another episode of Ensuite in the Attic for you. But I tell you, I've been having a little bit of difficulty doing that. I don't know what's going on. It's just this, uh, you know, I just used to have my Droid Max with a, with my Easy Voice Recorder app and uh, making, uh, making audios. And so this is all new. I'm actually in my bedroom here in the house. Uh, I got my studio rearranged. Uh, different configuration to be able to you know house this stuff and uh, provide a better workspace and so on and that's not important of course none of that matters but I'm just saying I tell you it's it's uh, it's something altogether different when you receive such a magnificent uh, gift I mean I'm just like I said I'm just totally blown away I, I'm just I'm just uh I guess God is all over it. Had no idea it was coming, except, let's see, this uh, this equipment came two days ago. What is today? 28th, 27th, 26th. Must have been on the 25th. Well, anyway, the day before this equipment arrived, the day before the person rang me up and said this stuff is coming to my doorstep, that uh, I was praying to God. I said, you know, I'd, I'd really like to have a, a better job. I, I want I need a job that I can feel better at. I, I need a job where I can excel, fit in. You know how it is you pray about a job. The next day I got this, I got the phone call and, and, and this, this equipment came that day. FedEx delivered it and uh, so here I am blabbling, uh, bl bl blabbling, I can't even say bl bl babble right. This is, this is the way it's been all afternoon. Uh, there's really nothing new from the attic. There really isn't anything new than to announce that I have some high definition, high quality, studio quality recording equipment. Some, I don't know what kind of level of pro stuff this is, but you know, it's, 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 it's just amazing. People always use the word amazing. They can't come up with a better word. Well, that's where I am. To totally blowing my mind. Awesome. So what's that all about? How, how come I got this gift? Because I prayed and then the, the next day, see, all that was in the works. Have you ever heard about that? You've ever heard people talking about, you know, they, they pray for something and then the next day they get some, they get whatever it is they're asking for, like in the mail or somebody brings it by or is delivered. Well, you think about it for a minute. A person prays and then like the next day they get an answer to, you know, a resolution for a need. Okay. Well, I didn't, even, I didn't even know what I was praying for. I was just praying for something else, something new, something in, in which I can be better and be more readily accepted because I go through a lot of trials and tribulations at every job. Uh, people people tend to not like me. I tend to, I tend to make people mad because I can see around corners. I can say, you know, well, there is a way of doing this better. And that just, that just makes people mad. And so you, you, you have a prayer and then the next day, boom, there it is, right? Well, it takes a while for stuff to come through the mail. So your prayer was answered before you prayed it. Your prayer was answered before you prayed it. 
It's weird. And I think the idea of actually making a prayer, of originating a prayer, comes to you because that's kind of necessary for you to understand what it is. It's uh, the gift that you're about to receive to help you better understand it, to help you better be prepared for it, I guess. Something like that. It's weird. It's, it's very weird. And I think my mind is so blown by this generous gift that um, I'm really kind of unable to make a decent uh, podcast today. This is like my 50,000th attempt at trying to come up with something to tell you and talk to you about. And... Um, each one was different. I come up with new stuff, stuff that I didn't know I could ever talk about, and it just flows out of me. I was talking on my last one. There was some weird, funky feedback coming in at the end. But uh, I was just talking about this uh, automatic sort of uh, programming that these people have, these children of Canaan. Like they, you know, I was on the Zeph Daniel podcast yesterday. And, uh, or was it yesterday or the day before? I think it was yesterday. I tell you, my time to me just doesn't mean anything anymore. That's a new one for me. I mean, I, it, what happened last week? Oh, did we have a last week? When was last week? I totally missed last week. When did we have last week? Well, Mike, last week was last week. Yeah, well, I don't, where am I now? Dude, it was last week. You were here, right? Well, I guess. So that's where I am, kind of in my head lately. And uh, I was talking about the children of Cain, and uh, I was on Zeph's show, and I said, yeah, they can see each other from across a room at a party. They just know each other. And they begin to speak, and they use, they're using the same language we do. You know, they're using English in this case. I don't speak any other language, <clears throat> except for kitty cat. I, can, I understand kitty cat. I've been around cats for so long. I, can, I speak kitty cat, but uh, when they say white, it's automatically turned into black. It's that nod, nod, wink, wink kind of a thing that they just know. They'll say, just, you know, in your mind, just imagine something that somebody could say to somebody in passing, whatever, you know. Leaves are green, okay, whatever. And somehow it's deciphered in another kind of a code that you don't understand. It's like if somebody says leaves are green, I'd be like, yeah, yeah. Well, depending on the time of the year, yeah, they are. And they'll be like, no, 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 that's, don't you get it, man. That's not what I was talking about at all. And I'm like, well, then what are you talking about? And they'd be like, you don't get it? Yeah, you know, it's that software, that additional, whatever it is that turns a truth into a lie. And they just speak it all the time. They can say black and it'll mean white. They can say left and it'll mean right. They can say orange and it'll be green. The sky is blue. That means the sky is orange or whatever. Whatever they say, the other one interprets it as the lie intended and somehow they just meet on that level. And I referred to it in the last video as they've got their Bluetooth going. It's like this Wi-Fi signal that we can't see. It's in that other dimension. It's a Wi-Fi signal of another dimension. It's like the Bluetooth of evil. Okay? They, it, it, that's what it is. It's like this uh, interdimensional, beyond our scope of the five or six senses, however many you think we have. It's beyond all of that. And it comes out of their mouth the way we hear it. And then the person to whom they are speaking, hears it in that coded language. It's sent out as a cipher and it's decoded. But we just hear, you know, I went to the store and bought milk today. Well, that means something completely different to the children of Cain. It doesn't mean any of that at all. And see, I'm here in this world thinking that people are saying, oh, well, you know, they went to the store and got milk today. No, 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 that's not what he said. But it is what he said. Well, that's not what he meant. Though. That's not what he really said when he said it now you're you know you're my eyes are beginning to cross and i'm thinking you know this is how politics are and oh god almighty 
But yeah, they do. That's the way it is. And they know each other, they see each other, they understand each other. They've got the code. They've got that code that I don't have and I don't want. And uh, the concept of the ensuite in the attic is a room off of a room, a, a uh, spa-like uh, master bath, you know, off of your master bedroom, which is the entirety of your attic, okay? I have to be willing to say, you know what? You children of Cain, you people who want to turn right into wrong and wrong into right, you can just have yourselves. Okay, you want me to... Get on board with your tranny bathroom stuff that men could walk into a woman's bathroom. You know, there was a time when I went to school, if a boy came to school in a dress, he wouldn't have made it to his locker. Wouldn't have made it to his locker. It wouldn't have happened. I mean, I'll put it to you this way. If the girls didn't beat the crap out of him, the guys would have. But the women of, t- of today, they love men dressing up as women. They love it when guys undergo the knife or some other kind of treatment to turn themselves into these freaks of nature, these fembots. And then, of course, you got the social justice warrior, Triglypuff, Triglypuff, Hashtag Triglypuff. Paul Joseph Watson uh, originated that when there's this social justice warrior. I mean, honestly, it's she looks like, you know, mad slug disease. I mean, that's what this is what mad slug disease looks like. I mean, she's just in this rage. And it's all about fat pride and whatever else they got going on. I mean, <laughs> she describes herself. Yeah, she's gay and lesbian and all, you know, God almighty. But this is the new truth now, you know, this is the new paradigm, this is the new thought process that we must all embrace if we're to love everyone and be all inclusive. And of course, that's what Satan loves. He loves the inclusiveness. He loves the inclusivity, is that a word? It is in the attic, it is today. He loves it when you embrace all that is a lie, come against their sin, you're a racist. They identify themselves with their sin that's how they identify their cultures now. Well, this is a sign of kind of sin we commit because this is our culture. This is the way our daddy did it and our other daddy's daddy and our stepdaddy's daddy and you know how it goes. So the Messiah came to break all that, to break the traditions of humankind. If you love your father more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you love your mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. If you love your kids more than me, You're not worthy of me. There's nothing inclusive about the Messiah at all, and that's what people don't want to hear. They don't want to hear that one little bit. Now, it's fine for Bruce Jenner to sashay his fembot hind end into the Second Baptist Church in, what is it, Houston, Texas? And, of course, the demons inside of Bruce say, yeah, this is cool. We got a hold of this church. All the churches, you know, how many... How many churches have been demonized? How many churches do you go into that you know that there's something wrong? How many? I'll bet you there's more than just a few. I want to ask you guys out there who have been, maybe you've been church shopping lately. Why is it you go church shopping? Why did you leave the last one? Why do you think another one's going to be better? What is it about these churches that you like? The people? The building, the parking lot, easy access to to the front door. You like it that they have Bible study on the first floor instead of in the basement that you don't have to walk up and down the flight of stairs. Are these the specifics of why you attend one church after another or another? Ask yourself how that relates to your salvation. Have you made a religion out of going to church? Do you go to church religiously, as they say? Ever wanted to leave a church, but haven't? Ever wanted to leave church altogether, but haven't? Because you know that you're not being fed, as they say? 
this bunch over here and that bunch over there, they're not meeting your quote unquote spiritual needs. Well, of course they haven't. They never will. None of that will ever fulfill any spiritual need that you have. You're just talking about temporal stuff. You're just talking about the crowd in the church, you know, who are these people are. I feel more at home with this kind of crowd than that one and so on and so forth. And it just goes back and forth and back and forth. And this seems to be like on your mind all the time and you put on your best polyester and yes, you go down to the Golden Corral or the Shoney's and belly up to the buffet bar all the time for fellowship. Glory. Right? It's human made glory. You can never find solace in it. You can never find ultimate happiness in it. It's something for you to do. Perhaps you just feel better being part of a crowd. You're part of a group. You just need company or whatever. Do you really need them? Do you need them for what you really need? Do you go to church because your family do? Do you go to church because, you know, this is where your mother or father or son or daughter go and you want to be close to them? It's just, you know, bonding time. And by the way, going to church on Sunday, you can you can praise the Father all you want any day of the week, which is fine. But to make something religious out of it, that's something else altogether. And uh, the Sabbath is on the last day of the week. It is on from sundown Friday to sundown uh, Saturday. And I dare you to, to take your day off. I dare you. I double, triple, dog, dare you. I'm not talking about doing it the way the Jews will tell you to do it, the Talmud and all this business. No, no, no. It's just laying aside what you normally do is work. You know, you don't have to mow the yard. You don't have, see, that's the thing. Thou shalt not, for me, also means I don't have to. Oh, I don't have to steal. I don't have to covet my neighbor's wife. Cool. That frees up a lot of time, doesn't it? Now, you know, keep you out of hell, you know, at the same time, you know, bonus. Yeah. So just, you know, make leftovers. You can call it leftover day, but if you, you, you want something to eat, make something to eat. It's not like you're working. It's not what it's talking about. It's talking about, you know, chopping wood. You know, you shouldn't be doing any of that. Take the day off. It's made for you. This business of thou shalt not. Okay, fine. That's what scriptures say. For me, it makes so much sense. Thou shalt not means I don't have to. Besides, after all, the uh, disciples were with Messiah. And they were rubbing the heads of wheat together to get the grain out because they were hungry. I've never done that. I imagine that's pretty good. Nice tender and all like that. Probably pretty tasty. And of course the Pharisees hated it because they'd have everybody convinced that they can't even, they can't even wash their hands or whatever it was. They couldn't even, you know, light a candle. They can't turn on a, a light bulb. You can't even flip a light switch. If you have, you know, you can't even turn on your oven. They have, I think a thing called a blintz. It's this thick sort of metal plate that they place on top of their, of at least like one burner or whatever. And they leave that burner on low for a whole day just to keep that top warm that they can warm their food up on. So they, so that they don't actually light the, the burner from sundown Friday to sundown Saturday. That sounds like a waste of gas, doesn't it? Does to me too. It's religious. That's what religiosity does to you. Never use a microwave. That's what they. That's what they're saying. A picture falls off off the wall. What are you, you're not supposed to hang it back up. What if the glass breaks? You're supposed to just leave it there, and not clean up the mess. That's not work. That's not what he's talking about. 
It's a day off. We're built for it. Children of Cain would like for you to do that on Sunday. And this is another thing. You see all these people, they, they claim they keep the Sabbath. They claim they're doing what's holy and all that. But yet, they'll go down and pay for a big fat dinner at the Fat Buffet Bar at Fatville and get fatter. It's no wonder people laugh at the churchgoers. It's no wonder people laugh at them. The old Habashaba and glory all the time. Well, you're just coming against the way people worship God. Oh, really? It just brings up another subject. How come I, you know, you go to a church and they expect you to hoop and holler and laugh yourself silly, getting drunk in the spirit. That's what they call that stuff. If you don't do it, you're, you're kind of like a, you're kind of like an outcast. What's wrong with you? We're all happy. Well, so am I. I, I just, I'm happy too, but I'd like to be very calm about it. Thank you very much. I don't need to go hooping and hollering like you polyester clad wackos. Well, you can just go back and sit at the back pew. Buddy, I'm sitting in my attic. I don't need your church. I don't need your pew. I don't need your hive mind. I don't need your religiosity. I don't need your churchianity. I don't need your holy roller in. You can have it. And that's the essence of what I'm trying to say here with the uh, on suite in the attic thing. A place to go that it's, a, it's an extended stay. Is what it is. It's your palace above everything else. It's the, uh, you call it a mind palace, you call it a heart palace. I don't know what you want to call it. It's just a, a state of being, a state of mind that no matter where you are, in whatever situation, that you needn't do what the children of Cain do. You needn't think that the way they do. You needn't act the way they do. You definitely don't need to act the way they do. I swear, I tell you what, I don't think there's any, very few of us out here who graduated kindergarten because they all act like they're kid, little kindergartners. They're all playing up nice to the teacher and talking up to the teacher. So, you know, the, they'll get away with, you know, staying in the hallway too long or talking a little bit too much in class or chewing that piece of gum or anything like that. You know, sweet talking, winkety wink with the teacher. And then you get your little cliques. When I was in kindergarten, we had to take a towel with us to lay down and take our little nap. We'd have a little lunch of graham crackers, probably milk, whatever it was, and we'd had to lay down for a little nap, all of us. And so many of people in the world haven't haven't ever graduated from that. Oh, they might have graduated from PhDville. You know, they're a longtime resident of master degree town, <clears throat> but they haven't graduated kindergarten. They wouldn't know how to think for themselves if their lives depended on it. And so they look at you, child of God, you know, the called out one. They look at you as if they just assume that you're one of them. And when they find out you aren't, you'll see their backside real fast. They can't handle you. They're a different species altogether. Oh, yeah, you can give, you know, you can need an operation and they can give blood. And if you're of the same type, sure, it'll it'll work just fine in your veins, but it's not the same kind of blood, if you know what I'm saying. No, it's not, not the same at all. It'll keep you alive because, you know, chemically speaking, blood is blood, the same type. But... In spiritual matters, they have nothing to give you and you have nothing to give them. Scriptures are not for them. They don't want it. They don't want the scriptures. They don't want them. They can't take it wherever they go, so why would they want want to put it in the house? Somebody might come over and see it, right? They've got a deal. They really do have a deal with Satan. A lot of them know it, of course. A lot of them, you know, have made that deal in up front and in person and then others are following him without knowing it but 
somehow, some way, they know that something's up. Listen. Just keep yourselves sane out there, everybody. Just keep yourselves free from them. I know, you have to work with them. I know. But, you know, you can practice on how to, you know, get along. You don't, it, there's no use for you to talk about God around them. If they don't want it, you know, Messiah, Yahushua HaMashiach, Jesus, he never busted down a door. He never did. That wasn't his thing. As a matter of fact, when he would heal people, because he knew that they'd be going back to like, you know, their home city or hometown or, you know, their neighborhood or whatever, he said, keep quiet about this. And more often than not, you know, they, they couldn't help it. They told everybody. And because of that, Jesus wouldn't go to that town. Why? Because he's, he's not about blowing his own horn. He's not talk, He's not about any of that. That's not what, it, what he's about. And that's why he told him, just keep it to yourself. And then there was a time he healed, what, nine or ten guys and only one or two of them came back to thank him? You know? And he's like, where are the other ones? Well, of course he knew where they were, but he made that statement so everybody could understand and write down what he said. That's the way it is. People wanted the Messiah for their physical needs and nothing more. And then when they realized that he was not only doing that, but he was talking about a certain kind of food, a certain kind of water to eat and drink, and that was spiritual. And because you have it, you'll never thirst again. They, they, didn't, they didn't want any of that. And they left him. They took off. So that's how they look up to Obama. He'll pay my gas bill. That's what they were looking for in the Messiah. They were looking for him. To, He'll pay my gas bill. That's what they were looking for out of him. And he wasn't about any of that at all. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, I'm tired of talking. I've spoke you know, this whole afternoon. I've been trying to make something decent. I think this is okay. And, uh, I hope somebody out there has gotten something from it. Seriously, if you want to leave a church, just get up and go. Yes, you're going to have a lot of people calling you. And you're going to have you're going to lose some friends. You're going to have people mad at you. That's just just know that the the children of the hive mind. That's all they know. Maybe they'll snap out of it. But see, it's none. It's not for you to do for them. You've got it all figured out for yourself. You want to be free. You want to break free. You want to worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in your way, in your house, with your family, because you're, you want nothing to do with that. You can see it. You can sense it. It's, it's, the odor of it has gotten into your clothes. Okay. And you can't wash it out. The only way to, to get away from it is to leave. Then go ahead. If you're a Freemason, Eastern Star, Shriner, daughter of the Nile, stop paying your dues. Right now, if your dues are if your dues are up again, don't pay them. If you want to write a letter to the secretary of the lodge, then you can do that. Give him your reason. Because I found Jesus Christ, I found Yahushua Hamashiach, I found the Messiah. I, I I have to dedicate my life to Him. No more of this busy work. Then that's what you do. Oh, it might be rough for you. They might they might come after you. So, if you're not willing to lose your life for the Messiah, then what good is it? What good are you? What good is your life? To be prisoner to that, be a prisoner of Christ and you'll be free. Be a prisoner to this world, you will die. I mean die. Take the mark of the beast. It's, just, it's, it's equivalent, really. Taking the mark of the beast, it's it's kind of equivalent, but there will be a time when you have to do that for real, and you never, ever, 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 ever want to do that. Okay, I'm starting to get into another subject, but I just want to say goodbye. Thanks for listening. You guys take care out there, and we will see you some other time.